So I had to make some low poly crystals recently and I realized it's a really great opportunity to learn loads of tips and tricks for generally making any object in Blender. So I thought this would be great for the Getting Good at Blender series. So follow along with me and we'll make some crystals. So your first challenge is to try and make this sort of shape. It seems kind of easy at first and there's lots of different ways to make this, but it really is worth having a go first before I show you how I make it because you'll learn so much more that way. So pause the video and have a go at making perhaps just one of these. Okay, so how do I make them? Well, we can start with the default cube. So shift A to add mesh cube. And remember the add menus up here as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is get the rough crystal shape. So I'm going to press S then shift Z or Z if you're American and scale it inward. So shift Z is scale, but remove the Z axis from the scaling. So it's only scaling in the X and Y. So I've got this base shape, but we need to give it those chamfered edges like the crystal. Well, we're going to need some more topology for that. So I'll go into edit mode with tab, or you can go to edit mode up the top here. So now we can start editing the shape. And like I say, we need more topology. A nice simple way is to add some loop cuts. You've got the loop cut tool down here, but I can just press control and then R to create a loop cut. And I want to create a loop cut across here and here. So left click once to set and I can move it into position and left click once to set the position. So I'll do the same this side, control R and double left click to set the position and set it in place. So I've got two loop cuts. This one's slightly out, but it doesn't matter too much. I can move that across if we need to by holding down Alt to select the edge loop and then GG will slide your edges across. So double tapping G is edge slide. Now, because I use the loop cuts, I'm in edge mode. I'm going to jump to vertex mode now. You can press one, two, or three to get to the vertices, edges, or faces. And in vertex mode, I'm going to choose the top one, press G to grab in the Z axis and pull that up. So it becomes pointy like this. And the same for the bottom. Select that one, G then Z to move that down. Now that does create these strange kind of shading shape anomalies as we're trying to make a quad out of triangles. But we can sort that out now. If I select these four vertices around the corners here, I can press Control B to bevel. Now, usually you move your mouse side to side and that will add more vertices, but nothing's happening at the moment. If I press V, that will affect the vertices because bevel's usually done on edges. So by pressing V, I can bevel the vertices and you can see I'm creating these nice bevels. So that's Control B and then V. There's a quicker way, which I'll show you in a moment. And when beveling, you can go all the way to the edges like this and you can see it stops at that point as it hits the other vertices. I don't actually want to do that at the moment. I'm going to bring it in slightly so that we've got a bit more topology to play with. So somewhere around here. I can vary this slightly by selecting the point and pressing GG to edge slide, and I can slide that upwards towards the other ones. And this one, maybe GG, bring it down, and just add a little bit of variation to these. So we've got this sort of shape. Still looks a bit rough at the moment. I'm still getting a little bit of a problem with the shading up the top here. So I want to merge some of these vertices together. You can select three vertices and press M to merge at center, and that works fine. And that's the same as if we were to bevel and move the vertices all the way out to touch each other. Or you can select a vertex. I'll choose this middle one this time. Make sure this button is ticked up here, which is auto merge vertices. If you don't click that and I press GG and slide it towards the other one, it's not actually joined together and I can press GG again and move it apart. So there's still two vertices on top of each other. So make sure this is enabled. And now when I press GG and GG to pull it back again, left click to set and now when I press G they're joined together. So you can see I've got a bit of variation now with a line going slightly across to the side. That's why I like to do this method where I can move the vertices around a bit. So I can press GG on this one, maybe GG to move this down, GG across here and GG across there. And this one I'll just select these three M to merge at center. So we've got this sort of interesting top of our crystal there and we can do exactly the same the other side. So let's go around to this side. I'll select these four vertices and this time I'm going to press Control Shift B and that's the shortcut for beveling vertices. So I don't have to press the V button when I've done it. So the last time we press Control B and then V, if you press Control Shift B, it goes straight to bevel vertex. Now, if I bring them together like so, I've got the merge vertices on, so they'll be merged together, but you can see it's a little bit uniform at the top there. That's why I don't like to do that. I'd rather undo that and press Control Shift B again, bring them out so they're relatively close. And that way I can GG to edge slide these across to offer some variation. Maybe this one I'll merge center and this one I'll bring in to the other one like that. And I'll continue edge sliding and merging some of these vertices for this side. So again, we've got this interesting shape at the top and I'll go into object mode so you can see that a bit easier. So back into edit mode, this time I'm going to go to edges, 
to add a little bit more variation and select any edges like this and press Control B. We don't need to press V this time because we are beveling the edges and I can create some nice interesting elements like this. I'll do that on this one as well, so Control B, and I think our crystal is looking really nice. So hopefully you came up with something similar. Now in order to add a bit of variation, it's very simple. I can duplicate this one, so Shift D and then X. Shift D is the command to duplicate. You can also find that under Object, Duplicate Objects. And I can just vary this slightly by going into vertex mode and maybe moving a few things around to change the shape slightly. Remember you can edge slide, so GG, and that will change the structure a bit more. And I've got a new crystal. Now what you do have to watch out for is indentations like this. That doesn't really look like your classic crystal. It might happen on certain crystals, but we can just easily move these across and inwards slightly so we don't get that concave shapes that we saw there. And we've got a new crystal. Now I usually create three of every object that I'm going to duplicate because it offers a nice lot of variation, but you should be able to get away with two in fact. If you like this approach and want to go into even more depth with methodical courses, then try out my Blender Beginner Course Bundle, three courses at only $25. Discount coupon in the description. So we've got some nice crystal shards now. The next stage is to make a nice crystal cluster. So I'll just duplicate these a couple of times and I'll go to top view for this and just move them into position. I'll scale them slightly, rotate them slightly in the Z axis and sort of bunch them all together like this. So we've got a little bit of variation there. Also I'll scale and then shift Z to make some thinner and maybe some thicker. So scale shift Z and actually maybe I'll make this shorter as well. And then just start positioning them so they're sticking out of the base like so. Remember every time you rotate it's perpendicular to the camera so move the camera around so you can rotate them on that axis. Now if you started to rotate them and you want to scale in the Z axis again you can press S then Z twice for the local Z axis. And I'm trying to make it so there's no holes between them and they're kind of sticking out in the gaps between each other. So just checking for holes, make sure there's no big gaps in the mesh. And if there are, just to grab one, change it around slightly, maybe rotate in the local Z axis. So Z twice is the local Z axis. And now we've got a nice cluster of crystals. So now's a good time to pause the video and catch it with me making this crystal cluster. Now we can join these all together by selecting them all, making sure you have one active object. So that's one highlighted in yellow and pressing Control J. And you can see they're all one object, but we have a problem here. If I go up to wireframe mode up the top corner there, you can see that the mesh is all overlapping and we've got lots of extra topology in here. So I'll undo those steps back to solid mode. What I want to do is a Boolean operation. A Boolean operation will add them together, but it will take away the inside edges and vertices which is better for a lot of things, especially performance. Now the traditional way of a Boolean operation is to go to the modifiers tab, just down here with this spanner or wrench if you're American, add modifier and you can type in B double O for Boolean and there's the Boolean. However, with this method, it's a little bit slow because we have to keep selecting them one at a time. So I'll just cancel that by closing it down. Instead, there's an add-on called Bool Tools. If you go to edit preferences, add-ons, and if you type in Bool into the search bar, you'll see the Bool Tool Add on. Make sure that's ticked and close this down. Now when you press N on your keyboard to bring up the side panel, under edit you have bool tools. So I can select all and again make sure you have one active object, so one that is highlighted yellow like this and you should be able to press the union button which will join them all together. Now occasionally, I'm glad about this, you sometimes get a problem. It's just a slight glitch in Blender so I'll undo that and there's two ways of solving this. In this case we can choose a different one to be the active object and try again and that time it worked. The other option, I'll just quickly undo that and go back to this original one. If I select it and press R to rotate slightly and just move it really subtly and slightly, that sometimes fixes it as well. So if I select all, make sure that's the active object and click union, it did indeed fix it. So just move it really slightly or choose a different active object as your union and that should be fine. Okay, so let's just look at wireframe now and you should be able to see there's a bit of a gap in the middle where the topology was before when we joined them together, we've actually gotten rid of all the inside faces. So back to solid mode, the last thing to do, you don't actually have to do this step, but if you want it to kind of sit on the floor or print this out, then we need a flat surface. So I'll go to front view, try and think of a way we can cut this up to give it a nice flat surface at the bottom here. Pause the video and have a go at that. Well, there is the bisect tool that we can use. If I go to edit mode with tab, I need to make sure everything's selected. So A to select all. Down the bottom here, we have the knife tool. And if I click and hold this, there's the bisect underneath it. And I can now 
cut across my object like this. Again, do make sure that every vertex is selected. They will only cut through selected faces and vertices. And I'll cut across around about there. Then I can open up the dialog box at the bottom here and choose clear inner, which is the inside of this arrow shape here. And in order to fill in the hole, I can click the fill button. And you can see we've got a nice flat base to our object. I'll go back to the select box, otherwise that can get a bit confusing, and minimize this tool here. Let's go back into object mode and we've got this nice crystalline object. What you do have to be a little bit aware of is you might have a few tiny holes at the bottom here if you didn't overlap your objects properly. You can, if I go into edit mode, for example, these ones here, I can select one, GG to edge slide to fill in any holes like that. There are areas like this, again, where I could press GG and slide these across to minimize the topology. What you can also do is if I go back to object mode, go up to the modifiers, that's the spanner here, add modifier, and then start typing in decimate, DEC, decimate, I can reduce the topology by just bringing this down and you can actually make slightly different and varied structures by doing this. I wouldn't go too far unless you want really sharp spiky ones like this, but probably about 50% and it's just enough to take away those few vertices that are quite close to each other. If I quickly go up to the statistics, you can see that this shape is now around about 200 faces. So it's relatively low poly for what it is. To shade this, I can go to the shading workspace and I'll just get rid of these side panels. So go up to the corner here and just overlap the other ones that we don't need and give this a new material. I'll call this crystal. And as a quick challenge to you, I want you to change the principal BSDF to try and give it a crystal look. Have a go at that. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is the transmission. This is how transparent it is. Now, if we turn that up, we're not getting a huge amount of transparency. It looks kind of crystal-like, but it's because we're in material preview mode and under the render settings, in EV, you need to turn on things like the screen space reflections, ambient occlusion can be helpful, but generally speaking, glass materials are always much better in cycles. And if I go to rendered view just here, we can see what it's going to look like in cycles. Now, it doesn't look great because we haven't got anything to reflect. And just as a note, in the render settings under film, I've got this set to transparent and we've got this very gray world background here. We can get to the world settings by under the shader editor, change it to world. And you can see that gray world settings there. It's much better if we have an image in the background, an HDRI to light our scene. So if I press shift A to add, texture, environment texture, make sure you don't choose an image texture, but an environment texture and plug that in. Immediately it goes all pink and we need to load in an environment texture. Now I have a folder full of HDRIs, as you can see up here. And if I go to this tab just here, you can see all the thumbnails of the HDRIs. Most of these are from a place called Polyhaven. They're free downloads, link in the description. And I generally go for the 2K version for quick and fast rendering. So let's choose this empty workshop, for example. You can see instantly that it gives our crystal much more of a crystal look because it's starting to reflect the background. I do find the background a little bit distracting, so I like to turn on transparency in the render tab under the film section, tick transparent, and then I can really see my crystals. Now to get back to our crystal material, we need to go across to the world and change it back to object. And I've got my transmission up to one, and I want to bring the roughness down a bit so it's a little bit more sort of glossy and shiny like this, and that's much more fun and close to being a crystal. I probably wouldn't go all the way like that. It looks a bit too much, so just bring up the roughness a little bit like so. Now for speed, I've got the denoise setting turned on, and I've got an RTX graphics card so I can use optics, and it does render a lot faster. If you haven't, then you'll want to change this to open image denoise. It'll still be relatively quick depending on your graphics card. And from here, you can change the color and give it some nice sort of crystal looking, cool, exciting look. You can even add a light on the inside, something like a point light, if you want it to glow slightly. So under the lighting settings, I can set this to something like 200 or maybe even 400. And you can experiment with the position and the color of the light as well and just find things out and see how you get on. So hopefully you enjoyed that and you came up with something similar. Let me know if you like this format and you want to see more of this sort of thing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.